Uh, now, it's one of the greatest aviation mysteries of all time, the disappearance of flight MH370. It's been seven and a half years since the Malaysia Airlines flight vanished, with 239 people on board. The official search was brought to a close back in 2017. But all over the world, people have continued the hunt, including aerospace engineer Richard Godfrey. Richard has spent the last nine months using new tracking technology, mapping the plane's final movements, and he believes he's found its final location, 1,900 kilometres west of Perth, lying at a depth of 4,000 metres. Richard Godfrey joins us now live from Frankfurt. Richard, this is amazing. How confident are you that you've found the plane? Oh, good morning to you. Um, I'm very confident. Uh, we have quite a lot of data uh, from the Inmarsat satellite. We have oceanography, uh, drift analysis. Uh, we have the performance data from Boeing. And now with this new technology, we have the WhisperNet data and all four align at a mm. particular point in the southern Indian Ocean. With all this data, um, is it obvious it was a suicide mission? Yeah, I think uh, it, it is because um, it is interesting to note that Sahari Shah had a home flight simulator. And at one point during the flight of MH370 in the Indian Ocean, I found that uh, he tracked towards this simulator endpoint uh, where he flew to fuel exhaustion. And I find um, that's not a conclusive piece of evidence, but it is a bit of a smoking gun. Yeah, absolutely. Now, it's, it's in this vast area of ocean, four kilometres down. Do you think the plane can be retrieved? Yes, I, I do believe so. Um, there are um, a number of companies I'm in contact with, such as Ocean Infinity, they have the capability to go to depths even way beyond 4,000 metres. Okay. It's very dark down there, very cold, intense pressure, but they have uh, um, uh, autonomous underwater vehicles that they can send down and uh, they can find it, that's for sure. Mm. So what do you think happened? What do you think this pilot did? Um, I think uh, he was uh, very upset maybe on, on that Friday, the 7th of March 2014. Uh, one of the opposition leaders in Malaysia was uh, sentenced to five years in jail um, and he was a good uh, supporter of this uh, uh, gentleman, uh, Anwar Ibrahim. Uh, so I think he was uh, very um, upset and he decided to divert his aircraft and uh, uh, make it disappear in one of the remotest places in the world. So, in other words, this was an act of terrorism? Yep, it was a hijacking. Uh, it was an act of terrorism. Uh, in my view, but, but you know, I'm not a court of law and I'm, uh, I can only uh, say that that's my current theory. I'm still open if the authorities want to reveal more information that they may have uh, and trying to keep an open mind on it. Um, but uh, it certainly looks that way to me at the moment. Well, Richard Godfrey, what a breakthrough. Thank you for joining us and explaining it to us. You're welcome. <laughs> Gee, that's incredible, isn't it? That is Amazing huge. Amazing story. Yeah, after all this time, those poor families. Yep. Yeah.